want to know why, like when we talk about like uh, promiscuous women, when we talk about like bo why body count matters to guys, it's <laughs> this is why it matters to guys right here. That look, that's why p body count matters, ladies. In case you were, this is body count summed up in, in one facial expression, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Because if a guy, if, 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 if the guy that she used to get with made her look like that back when she was so crazy in her college days and you can't do that, guess what she's thinking about when she's, you're fucking her. I mean, she, you can't give her that experience. It's like, I, I, I did the whole essay on this. It was the, uh, what was it? Oh, it was, um, um, uh, as uh, good as it, no, it wasn't good as it gets. It's, um, saving, um, uh, uh Saving, saving the best. That's what it was. There's an essay that it's actually in one of my books, saving the best. And it tracks this guy on Reddit who related this story on Reddit. I'm giving you the brief version of it. And his wife was like frigid. Like she would give him like, you know, starfish sex. She was just kind of lackluster. She's kind of like a dead lay, but it's his wife. Right. And he wants to have, he just wants to have better sex with her. Like, and maybe they had better sex when they were single, but now that she's married, or maybe she's just kind of like missionary and she's like, yeah, I got laundry to do. Are you done yet? You know, that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out that the guy, the husband finds this VHS tape because it was older, this, this tape of her having sex with like multiple guys, like it's like group sex of her when she was in college. And he came upon the tape and confronted her about the tape and says, you, why do you not want to have sex with me? Like you did with these guys back in, in um in college and you know of course she comes over oh, i'm not like that anymore that wasn't me i was you know I've, I've changed since then yada 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 i'm like yeah but you're with your husband now i'm with you for the long term i'm i'm till death do us part and sickness and health forsaking all others right i'm the guy that you should want to have this kind of sex with not these fuckers and like me right because i'm here i'm the one like logically like guys are thinking you know deductive logic we're trying to solve a problem with deductive logic well, the thing is, is a guy, and this was his infamous quote was like, great. He's like, I, I'm, uh, I married a whore who fucks like a prude. Well, yeah, with you, not with them. The, the, the guys that she was with on the tape made her look like this, but the guy that she married, the, the, the guy who is the dad, remember we're talking about like Chad, Chad's versus dads who's out fucking and who's out reproducing. Are the guys in the video reproducing with her? No, because she didn't have kids. She actually had a kid with the guy with a, with, that was actually one of his dilemmas. But um, he ended up like leaving her, I think. I don't know if I ever got the follow up on that story, but um, the, the long and the short of it is that like he couldn't organically, naturally provoke that kind of, that level of like visceral animal monkey sex desire that he really wanted from his wife. He's like, you should want to have the best sex you've ever had in your life with your husband, because I'm going to be the guy that's going to be with you for the rest of your life. Well, when you present it in rational terms, you're, you're explaining it's like demonstrate, not explicate. When you're explicating it in those terms, then what happens is it even turns her off that much more because you're being analytical. You're not being, you're not speaking emotional. You're speaking empirical. And no matter how you try to rationally, reasonably solve the problem of her wanting to fuck you, you're just negotiating desire. She just simply doesn't have any natural desire for you and probably won't now because you've observed the process. And then later in that, in that essay called, uh, it's called saving the best. The reason I called it saving the best is because like women are supposed to say, like, I want to have the best sex I can with my husband, right? Saving myself for my husband. Well, if you're not going to save your virginity for your husband, you should certainly save your sexual best for that husband. That's not the case. So when you think, when we talk about like promiscuity and women and body count and women, that's the issue. Like we, like I've, I've explained it this way. I've said, look, um, you know, men are concerned about like paternity. They want to make sure that you're a good bet for paternity. So if you're a woman who has a high body count and guys are going to go, I want to fuck her, but you know, recreational use only. I don't want to have a family with her because I don't know if she's going to cheat on me or try to cuck me or whatever else. And that's, and, and maybe that's like silly and stupid and insecure, but it's, it's the innate evolved instinctual way of thinking about a woman who has a child already, or who is not a good bet for your paternity. That's one aspect of it. The other side of that equation is, am I going to get this woman's sexual best? Because in the saving the best essay, 
the woman was having like sort of wanton three ways and, and God knows what else. She was so crazy in her college years, but now she's getting serious and she's had her fun and there's no fun for you, mister. We need to responsibly move off into the future, right? Well, it, then they're shocked that guys are not forthcoming to want to marry that because they've already given it up, given up their sexual best to a guy who in no way had to jump through the hoops that he has to. He doesn't have to qual. Those guys didn't have to qualify for it. All they had to do was be hot, have big dicks and be ready to go. And so that's another aspect of like when women have more sexual partners, all it does is mean that there's a bigger pool of guys for whom that she has sex with, like the guys in the videotape. And now because we have digital, uh, a digital footprint, we, well, and in this case, you know, a, a physical, you know, a tape footprint of her sexual past, then the guy looks at that and he goes, damn, you, I, I married a whore who fucks like, oh, I married a whore who fucks like a prude. And of course, what she says is, oh, it's okay. No, please don't divorce me. You know, I'll fuck you like that. Whatever you want. Anal sex, uh, three ways, you name it. Well, you know, I'm good. I'll, I'll step it up a little bit. That's obligation now. That's not natural design. She doesn't, she'll do those. Maybe the behavior, she'll behave like that, but she's an actress at that point. He might as well go pay a, a hooker for a better performance because he doesn't even know the hooker. You, know? you might as well be paying a prostitute at that point if you don't have her natural desire. And that's the difference between validational sex and transactional sex. The transaction in this case is the negotiation of her, you know, her mitigated obligated desire. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't divorce me. I'll, I'll do what you want to. I'll be a sexual, I'll give you hummers or whatever. Gobble the goo. Thanks. Andrew Dice Clay. But you know, that ship has sailed. She doesn't want to do that. If she did want to do that, she'd already be doing it. She'd always, you know, you are the hottest guy I've ever been with. I just want to do crazy things with you that I've never done before. And thank God you're my husband. It doesn't happen these days. But ladies, that's another reason why higher body count matters to guys. Because in all likelihood, the guys that you had, the guys that you can't get over, the alpha widow, your alpha widow, like the alpha guys that you can't get over, <laughs> the jack at the bottom of the fucking sea, that guy, you probably had a better sexual experience with that guy than you ever will with your husband. And you'll say, what? Well, I love him. We have feelings. We have meaningful sex. Yes. While you're sitting there giving him starfish sex in missionary position and wondering if he's going to spill beer on the couch, like American pie, whatever, um, American beauty, um, or, you know, Hey, are you finished? I, I got laundry to do. It becomes a chore. It's an obligation. It's a duty sex, good Christian duty sex, right? It's not the sex you want to have. The sex you want to have makes you look like this. <laughs> unless, unless this is like what you're getting like on a daily basis, right? Between, you know, loads of laundry. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I have a really good sex life with my wife. It can exist. It's just like for guys who know how to draw this woman out in the bed. If you're a husband, ladies, if you're a wife and your your husband can make you look like this <laughs> after 10 years of marriage, you, odds are you're going to be in it for the long haul. You're going to get past the seven year mark and probably go off and live together in your 80s and drink lemonade on the porch. <laughs> this leads to being in your 80s and <laughs> drinking lemonade on your porch. <laughs> Living the good life. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Did I ever get into, I got into all kinds of trouble when in the Pat Campbell days when I talked about duty sex. I mean, duty sex? How dare? And I was like, I'm talking to like evangelical Christians in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm like, you guys know damn well what duty sex is. Don't ask, come to me like you're shocked. You made that word up, not me. I'm just repeating it. I can't believe you say duty. You have a duty. They try to make a biblical case for like fucking your man, but I always have a problem with that because it doesn't make you look like Lena. 